This is part 162 of ASP.NET tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss binding ASP.NET tree view control to a database table. This is continuation to part 161. So please watch part 161 from the ASP.NET tutorial before proceeding with this video. At the moment, this tree view control is bound to this web.sitemap file. We discussed this in our previous session. First, let's remove that association. And to do that, let's delete this data source ID attribute. Let's also get rid of the sitemap data source control. We want this tree view control to be bound to this database table. So we need to create this table. Before we do that, let's understand the structure of this table. This ID column is the primary key for this table. Tree view text is what is displayed within the tree view control. Navigate URL column contains the name of the page that we want the user to navigate to when they click on a tree view item. This parent ID column represents the relationship between the rows in this table. Look at this. The first four rows within this table has got parent ID as null, meaning these four rows are going to be the top level items within the tree view control. Notice that home, employee, employer and admin are the top level items. The other rows that have got a parent ID are the child items. So notice the parent ID for rows 5, 6 and 7, it's number 2, meaning these rows are children of another row within the same table which has got ID of 2. So which row has got an ID of 2? Employee row. So rows 5, 6 and 7 are children of employee row. So notice that within the tree view control, upload, edit and view resume are displayed under employee. In a similar fashion, employer and admin items have also got children. In order to speed things up, I have already created this table. Here is the SQL script to create and populate it with some sample data. I'll have the script available on my blog in case if you need it. While we are here, let's also create a stored procedure that's going to retrieve all the four columns from table TBL tree view items. So here is that stored procedure and we have called it SP get tree view items. All that is left now is to write ADO.NET code to execute the stored procedure and retrieve data. So let's flip to Visual Studio. Let's get to the code behind file. And the first step here is to import the required namespaces. We need system.data, we need system.data.sql client, and system.configuration. Let's write a private function that's going to retrieve the data. Let's call it get tree view items. So the first step here is to read the connection string from web.config file. So within web.config file, I already have a connection string called dbcs that's pointing to the SQL server that's installed on my machine. So let's read that connection string using configuration manager class. So the name of the connection string is dbcs. All right, the next step is to create the SQL connection object itself. So SQL connection con equals new SQL connection, create that using the connection string. And let's now create a SQL data adapter object. And we want the SQL data adapter object to execute this stored procedure, SP get tree view items. So let's copy the name and paste it here. And we want this data adapter object to use this connection object. So let's pass it as a parameter to the constructor. And now let's go ahead and create a data set object. But before we do that, we, this data adapter is executing a stored procedure here. So we need to tell that it's executing stored procedure and we do that by using command type property. So command type dot stored procedure. But if you notice the stored procedure, it doesn't have any parameters. So it's okay not to have this line. All right, now let's go ahead and create a data set object. And then let's invoke the fill method, which is going to execute the stored procedure and fill the data set with the data that is retrieved. All right. Now, the most important thing here is to establish the relationship, the primary key and foreign key relationship. And to do that, we are going to use the relations collection and use the add method. So we want to add a relation. So we are going to use this overloaded version. So 
specify a name for the relation. Let's call it child rows. And how are the columns within this table related? So what is the parent column? The parent column is ID and the child column is parent ID. Okay, so when we execute this stored procedure, this data set is going to contain one table. So, and how do we get access to that table? All we need to do is ds.tables of zero should give us that table. Okay, and within that table, the column which has got a name of ID is going to be the parent column. And what is the child column? Parent ID column is the child column. So ds.tables of zero dot columns of parent ID. All right. Now let's go ahead and use a for each loop. So for each data row, let's call it level one data row n ds.tables of zero dot rows. So basically, we are looping through each data row that we have got in this table. And then a tree view control is a collection of tree node objects. So we need to create a tree node object. Let's call it parent tree node equals new tree node parent tree node dot text. So where are we going to get the text from? This column. What is the name of the column? Tree view text is the name of the column. So level one data row. And in order to get the spelling right, let's copy the name of the column here. So tree view text dot to string. In a similar fashion, we need to set the navigate URL property for the tree view object. And where are we going to get the navigate URL from this column? Now, some of the rows within this table have got children as well. So we need to get child rows as well. And how do we get child rows? It's very simple. We discussed this in previous uh, video sessions as well. So let's create a data row array object and let's call this child rows equals. So we'll take the parent, I mean level one data row dot get child rows. And this function expects the name of the relationship. What's the name of the relationship that we have added? Child rows. So let's pass that. And what is this method returning? Look at that, it's returning an array of data rows. So now we are going to use another for each loop and loop through the child rows. So for each data row, and let's call it child or level two data row in this child rows array. So what are we going to do here? create another tree node object and let's call this maybe child tree node equals new tree node. And let's copy these lines. So child tree node dot text. Where are we going to get the text from? Level two data row, tree view text column. In a similar fashion, child tree node dot navigate URL. We are going to get that again from level two data row navigate URL column. So once we have this child tree node object created, we need to associate that with this parent tree node. And how do we do that? Parent tree node dot child nodes dot add. And we are going to add a child tree node object. So here, child tree node. Let's pass that to this function. And once we are done adding all the child tree nodes, 
Finally, what we need to do, we need to add this parent tree node to the tree view control itself. And what is the ID of the tree view control? It's tree view one. So tree view one dot nodes dot add. And what does it expect? A tree node object. And we are going to add this parent tree node. So it's as simple as that. All right. Within our page load event, if it's not a post back event, meaning if it's the initial get request of the web form, go ahead and invoke this function get tree view items. With all this in place, let's go ahead and run this and see if it works as expected. So we should be able to get the data from the database right now. Now look at this. We have got a problem here. So the first set is correctly displayed, but look at this upload resume you know, these children are also displayed as parent nodes. And in order to correct that, all we need to do is, so basically, at the top level, we only need to display those rows which doesn't have parent ID. And in order to achieve that, what we are going to do So if level one data row dot get child rows, basically, you know, this level one data row, you know, as we loop through, we are going to loop through each row within this table. So we are going to check if parent ID column is null or empty. If that's the case, then we know I mean, if it's not null or empty, then we know it's a parent item, in which case only then go ahead and execute this piece of code. That's what um, we have to tell in order to achieve that. So if level one data row of what's the name of the column parent ID dot two string. If this is null or empty, only then go ahead and create, you know, a parent tree node and then associate all the children with that parent tree node. Okay, which means this piece of code will be executed only for these four rows, which has got parent ID of null. And that way, we we will not have this issue. Let's go ahead and run this and see if it works as expected. Look at that. Now it's working as expected. Good. Now, at the moment, within the tree view control, we only have two levels. But what if we have three or more levels? Let's say, for example, under upload resume, I'm going to have maybe two more um, items. So let's insert two more rows into the uh, table TBL tree view items. Look at this. You know, AAA, that's the name of the page. And number five is the parent ID, meaning we are associating this row with number five. What is number five? Upload resume. And we are doing the same thing with this row as well. So basically, these two rows are going to be children under upload resume. OK, so we want AAA and BBB to be displayed under upload resume. So let's execute this insert script first. And let's execute this procedure just to make sure that we are getting the data that we expect. Look at that. We get AA and BBB as well. So within the database, we have these two rows as well now. Let's run this and see if we get them displayed within the tree view control. Look at that. It doesn't display them. So the code that we have just written will only work if there are only two levels within the tree view control. Okay. In our next video, we'll see uh, how to make this tree view control work with three or more levels in the hierarchy. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.